and welcome to the Baldwin Public Library Board Meeting on Monday, August 19th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. in the Rotary Donor Rooms. The full board packet is available online at www.baldwinlib.org on the Friday preceding the meeting. This is an open meeting. All members of the public are invited to attend. Robert, would you please call the roll? Karen Rock. Here. Danielle Rumpel. Missy Mark. Here. Wendy Friedman. Here. Frank Paisano. Here. Jennifer Wheeler. Here. Also with us via Zoom is student representative Kate Walter. Here. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> if we could please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Missy, would you please read the library yes. mission statement on page one? Baldwin Public Library Mission Statement. The Baldwin Public Library in Birmingham, Michigan, enriches lives by providing opportunities and resources for everyone to learn, connect, and discover. Thank you. Um, first order of business is general public comment period. The library board values public meetings and welcomes your comments on library issues, but will not debate items not on the agenda. The board respectfully asks that comments be made as concisely as possible when a motion has been made or in the general public comment portion of the meeting. The maximum time for individual speakers should not exceed three minutes. Does any member of the public have any comments? Thank you. New entrance is wonderful. Thank you. Um, the next order of business is the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion and approved by a roll call vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered as the last item under new business. First is the approval of July 15, 2024 board meeting minutes. Those are on page seven. Second, the approval of July 2024 vendor payments in the amount of $210,837.65, including payments in excess of $75,000, and that's on page 10. And the third and last item is approval of total expenses in the amount of $396,476.23 on page 15. Does any board member want to remove any items? Is there any member of the public that wants to remove any items? <coughs> we have a motion. I move to um, move the uh, consent agenda. I'll second. Thank you. Robert, could you please call a roll call vote? Rock. Yes. Rumpel. Yes. Mark. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Paisano. Yes. Wheeler. Yes. All yeas. Okay. Uh, next, the board committee reports. First one is finance. Danielle, if you could do that. Oops, I skipped, sorry. Board reports and special announcements. Okay, President's report. <laughs> and I had a similar comment to yours is that the new um, uh, area looks amazing. I've been in there. Um, it's kind of nice. It's very open and airy and light. Um, very welcoming. And I'm looking forward to the September 15th open house. Uh, board comments? Anybody have any? Missy? I would like to compliment and give my heartfelt thanks to Robert Stratton for the yeoman's job he did. And if you had the helpers, I'd like to thank them as well. But I know you were the key person in completing all the gardening and relocating and whatever for our beautiful, I mean, it just looks fantastic. So great job. Thanks, Missy. It wasn't all me. It was Rebecca and um, head of adult services, H, uh, her daughter, her daughter, actually. Oh, well, please pass on heartfelt. I, I 
know it's a big job, so can you come to my house? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> Any other board comments? I just wanted to comment on how much I love the new entrance and thank you to everybody that's worked so hard on it. Um, we've already used it as a meeting spot for the BCS PTA, so we appreciate that while our building's under construction, this one's up and running, so thank you so much. Uh, next, staff anniversaries, it's Danielle, if you could read those. Absolutely. Um, we would like to honor all of our staff anniversaries. First is Sarah Dahmer, IDEA Lab Assistant, reached two years of service on August 14th. Paul Gillen, bookkeeper, reached 11 years of service on August 16th. Mick Howie, Adult Services Librarian, reached seven years of service on August 5th. Tony Lowe, Circulation Assistant 1, reached 19 years of service on August 2nd. Terry Meyer, Youth Services Library Assistant, will reach 12 years of service on August 27th. Daniel Patton, Substitute Adult Services Librarian, reached seven years of service on August 18th. Kristen Tate, Head of Circulation Services, reached 23 years of service on August 15th. Wow. And Peter Van Geldren, IT assistant, reached one year of service on August 1st. Thank you to all of our wonderful staff and many, many years of service there in that list. So thank you for all you do. And Jacqueline, could you tell us about all the fun, exciting things coming up? You know I'd love to. <laughs> um, this Wednesday, we will have the opportunity to participate in a question and answer session with the Oakland County Water Resources Commissioner Jim Nash. Um, he'll be here to talk about environmental sustainability, green building, and regional cooperation. We do ask you to register for this one so we make sure we have enough room in person as well as on the Zoom um, virtual visit. So um, that is open and spots are still available. So if you have any water resource questions, now's your chance. On Saturday, we're hosting Books and Blankets, Outdoor Family Storytime. That'll be um, off-site at Barnum Park, um, unless the weather does not cooperate, in which, uh, at which time it'll be in this very room. Um, but uh, we're excited to offer this um, all-ages storytime. You bring your own blanket, and our librarians will present a terrific storytime for everybody. Um, if you are going to the park, we love your pets too, but please leave them at home. <laughs> Um, we're doing a tallest tower challenge with our brick builders next Monday, August 26th. Uh, they'll have an hour to build the tallest tower they can with all the Lego bricks available in the youth department. BART is offering a Fundamentals of Canva class on Wednesday, August 28th. On Wednesday, September 4th, you can join Jeff for a grand tour of the Idea Lab. If you've ever wanted to ask a question about the lab, this is the time. Um, they're happy to take those questions anytime, but this is specifically set aside for new users or um, if you have, have a great idea and you want to know how to execute that in the lab, this is a good opportunity to do that. On Saturday, September 7th, they're making fall pumpkin eucalyptus hoop wreaths um, as an adult craft. Um, that'll be from 3 to 4 p.m. Um, I believe if that program is not full, it is very nearly full. So oh, is it? Okay, yeah. Last time I looked, it was really close. So, um, But uh, put your name on the waiting list just in case. <laughs> Uh, on Saturday, September 8th, we'll be doing uh, crafts at the Kids Zone at the Farmer's Market. We'll also have the book bike out there on that day. On Thursday, September 12th, we'll hear from the st uh, staff at the Birmingham Museum. This time it's going to be Leslie talking about how the Saginaw Trail became Woodward Avenue and shaped Birmingham. And on Saturday, no, that's Sunday, Sunday, September 15th, I hope we'll see you all for the Phase 3 open house and ribbon cutting between 1 and 3 p.m. with comments to be held at 1.30. We'll see you there. Mm -hmm. And now next is board committee reports. And Danielle, if you could report on finance committee. Absolutely. The Baldwin Public Library Board's finance committee met on Monday, August 12th at 4 o'clock in the DeLoss boardroom. Resident were Frank Paisano, myself, Director Kraft, Jim Cummins, Connor Brannigan of Raymond James. Uh, we had no public comments. Jim Cummins and Connor Brannigan of Raymond James gave a status update on the library's trust funds. The trust funds are performing well, and Cummins believes the trust is set up close to a model portfolio with a balanced mix of tech, healthcare, and financial services funds. Director Kraft signed the Raymond James paperwork to convert the trust accounts into advice-based ambassador account, which caps fees at 0.5% and will save the trust a few thousand dollars a year and provides more flexibility. 
Director Kraft reported on the fiscal year 23-24 budget report after 12 months. All budget line items are currently in line with the amended budget. We received $52,000 in penal fines uh, and a payment at the end of July. And we also received an additional $62,000 in investment income due to the recent sale of bonds. Uh, Director Kraft discussed the financials and rationale behind hiring a full-time staff member in the IDEA lab to expand the open hours of the lab and to better safeguard lab knowledge in the case of future employee turnover or extended absence. The committee was in agreement with Kraft's recommendation. And Rebecca reported on July friends of the library expenditures, and Frank did not attend any city meetings. Uh, the, our next meeting will be held on Monday, September 9th at 4 o'clock in the boardroom. I'm just curious about the penal fines. Does you know how that compares to like last year? I think was, that it was around the same as last year. Um, there was a point in time where we were getting around sixty-five thousand dollars in penal fines, but it hasn't been that high since COVID. Okay. And following up on that, uh, the sixty-two thousand investment income is that uh, high, low, average? That's very high. Last year when we lost investment income, yeah. um, this is the, the delayed um, response to getting it back. So Were you planning on this? I was not. I, was, I had budgeted um, $15,000 and we we're getting $142,000. So wow. it's good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, just um, the uh, ideal lab, a full-time staff member. So Jeff is a full-time staff member, right? Jeff is the one full-time staff member. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's the only department in the library that doesn't have two full-time staff oh, members. Okay. Um, so it's hard to keep part-time staff um, in, in that position. Is Sarah going to be? Um, we're advertising the position to the public. Um, so yes, that'll be an open process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, just, I think it's really needed. Mm -hmm. And there's so many times when you know, Jeff's engaged with somebody and there's other people waiting and want to do something and they don't want to interrupt and it's hard. Mm -hmm. And next is the building committee. If Frank, if you could report on that. Yes, um, the library uh, board, uh, building committee met on Monday, August 12th at 3 o'clock in the Deloitte uh, boardroom. Uh, who, uh, Rebecca Kraft, Melissa Mark, and myself were present. Uh, no members of the public uh, were uh, said anything for public comment. Um, phase three update, PCI daily, working on the final punch list items. Uh, epoxy will be installed at the front entrance and atrium um, August 22nd and 23rd. So everybody will have to use the um, youth room entrance to get into the library for two days. And then once that's done, I think they plan on taking um, the Martin Street um, um, ramp system out <clears throat> and we focus just on our new front entrance. So, but people can always get into the library from Martin Street. Mm -hmm. It'll just be a, a, a fence and um, a pretty gate. I, I think it's a, the yeah, gate and then two steps. Yeah, two yeah. steps. So that will always have access into the building. Um, the concrete sidewalk repairs are, were complete on August 8th. Um, the elevator is working periodically. A4 access has us on a low priority list to fix the elevator just because we have a ramp and stairs. So I guess they're quite busy um, fixing other elevators, so they just haven't gotten back to us yet. So hopefully that's going to happen in the next month because um, it is brand new. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, as it was mentioned, September 15th is the open house, and all the invitations were mailed, and we're getting excited for that. Uh, Wendy Popko is running a little bit behind with the mural, but she has finished one panel and then plans to install the full piece September 8th prior to September 15th of the open house. And the two panels we saw look fantastic, so we're excited to have that. Um, looks like the staff lounge, the chairs for the staff lounge will arrive in early September, and um, Kraft and uh, Miller will solicit quotes for carpet, carpeting the staff lounge. We had some extra carpet left over that we are going to repurpose into the staff lounge because they requested it after they just updated it. So we're excited for that. Uh, the gardens, DPS will repair the damaged boxwood hedge on Martin Street the week of August 19th. Uh, the teen scene update, adult service staff are weeding the nonfiction collection and access services staff are shifting items to make a larger designated spot for the teen area. I think Rebecca will be um, designing, I think they're going to work collaborative with um, Elizabeth 
make the teen scene and then purchase um, um, the furniture from uh, CB? Uh, ISDG. ISDG yes. In Royal Oak. So thank you for taking on that and saving us money. Um, uh, Kraft will be getting quotes for the mini split unit for the Idea Lab to balance the heat generated by the lab equipment. She will coordinate the project with the city's building department, and that was part of the budget during 2024 and 2025. Uh, we are waiting insulation of the new roof membrane over the youth um, dock area and the dock area um, after the phase three is completed. These are both city managed projects and they will be paid by the city to do that. Jacqueline continues, to, <laughs> her hat of all trades here at the library, continues to squeegee the roof after significant rain events and clear out uh, the roof drains to allow movement so there's no leakage in, into the building. Uh, we are monitoring about 10 different leaks in the drywall above the youth room, and hopefully once that membrane goes on, that, that will fix the problem. Water seepage issue and maintenance closet down in the basement. Ja Jacqueline has been diligently collecting water from four leaky pipes um, that was originally from the boiler system, or is it the boiler? Or I think it's the cooling system. The cooling system yeah. that is sweating, and it, it, it creates... I guess buckets of water. Condensation is just coming down the pipes and it needs some new insulation. So um, Rebecca was in contact with the city. Um, I think the city um, maintenance individual was on, on vacation for two weeks. He's back and he's, I think he was gonna make that a first priority to take a look at and fix that. Um, uh, Director Kraft will order 20 wheeling and foldable uh, tables for the rotary room. We're gonna replace these tables. They've been in here for a long time. They're heavy, they're bulky, they don't really, um, uh, you know, fold up well. So we're going to get the tables we have up in the Gene Lloyd room that's done very well. They fold easily, a little bit bigger, lighter, and that's going to be coming down the pike here when probably sometime this fall, Rebecca? Late September. Late shipping. September. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we should get them in October, you know, for October board meeting. Um, during the building committee meeting, um, I don't know if anybody noticed the bird safe glass uh, that we, the stickers we have in the youth room. On the corner, there's a small mm -hmm. little imprint there with a, a QR code to let people know what we're trying to achieve. This, you know, with bird strikes, we feel that it's it's too small of a sample area that we'd like to see it go all the way to the top of the building, just to get a better idea of, you know, bird, birds hopefully not striking it and the durability of the product before we make that initial investment to apply that to our building. Um, the next meeting will be held Wednesday, September 4th at 4 o'clock in the Deloitte Boardroom, and we always welcome public or anybody to attend. Oh, Jenny. Um, do, do you have an idea of when um, we might get more of the bird safe film? You know, originally when it was, um, you know, uh, placed there, um, you know, it should have went up, mm -hmm. but he didn't bring a, a tall enough ladder. We just did that small piece, but I would assume that we're going to get that up probably in the next before before winter, sometime okay. this fall. I would hope. What do you think, Rebecca? It'll either be before October or next May. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is that we already paid for that, or no, we have to pay again to have someone else out again? Okay. But I think it will give the public a better idea. Um, what it's going to look like and the durability of it when mm -hmm. it goes through the four seasons here in Michigan. Yeah, that little spot is probably not, doesn't really hit the... We don't think it's a big enough test area yeah. to make a, a, an informed decision. And because it's a costly decision, we want to make sure... Um, it's that almost we have the, there. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, think I mean, yeah, the bird would have to be going. <laughs> but even so. the, the bad weather and stuff. Right. Know, that's not a spot yeah. that's no. going to get hit as much as someplace. Right. Rebecca recommended maybe doing the whole youth room or the Graham's room, but we, that would be quite expensive. Or so I think it's about eight windows. Eight windows. Yeah. So it would show you, it would give you a realistic view of it. Right. But we chose just to do the two panels for now just to save on money to make sure it works and it's supposed to do the job that it does. Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting. I, I guess um, McCormick Place in Chicago last year had a devastating um, evening when um, what, a million birds? A, a thousand? A thousand, or thousand. a significant amount of birds hit the glass, and they, they actually just implemented the, the system that we have on our library right now on McCormick Place. I think it's a $2.2 million project that they're doing. 
um, to try to mitigate any bird strikes going forward. So it was not good. Yeah. I know we put that, um, the flyer is in our board packet. Has anyone left any feedback on that? Yeah, we've gotten a lot of good feedback, maybe like 25 people. Oh, wow. Um, and there's two people that aren't in favor of it, but everyone else is in favor of it. Hmm. Are they people from Anne's list or? Um, a couple of people from Anne's list and then um, a lot of patrons. The cost is also a factor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not inexpensive. And then you have to make a decision as to where you're going to stop the, the dots and, and it, gets, it gets more complicated, so. We're trying to take our time to get as much information prior to making an informed decision, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Frank. Um, next committee is the Outreach Committee. Ms. Smith, if you could sure. report on that. The Outreach Committee met on Tuesday, August 6th at 11 o'clock in the Delos, Delos Boardroom at the library present were Wendy Friedman, Missy Mark, Rebecca Kraft, and Jacqueline Miller. Public comment, none, old business. Um, we talked about print on demand web store item review. And this is, um, this is something we've talked about and we were finalizing some of the details on this. We like the variety of the items um, that they selected including, you know, sweatshirts and t-shirts and beanies and everything like that. We wanted them, they had a lot of dark, they had black, navy, whatever. We wanted to add white and um, then change the ball cap selection because they had um, sort of a hot ball cap selection for, or, or a warm. Like, like a winter. Cold yeah, weather. winter. It was a cold weather cap. Yes. <laughs> And, um, and then we want to add a beanie hat for cold weather. When the store goes live, we will post a link at the information desk and allow people to suggest other items that they would like to see with the library logo featured. So um, I don't know what we will be adding, but we're open to suggestions. And just to reiterate, this is a... Um, offering that the library makes no money on. It's just to get our brand out and um, to offer something to the public at pretty much at cost, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so we're not making any money on it, but we thought it'd be nice to have people going around town with their logo shirts. So uh, we also looked at the uh, trifold draft. We're doing this, um, Special, a new draft of uh, a trifold to bring out to different um, areas, associations, et cetera, to talk about um, what the library offers in a very condensed, you know, bullet point kind of um, format. And that's going along very well. We're almost at the end of editing that. And then um, I'm sure, was it, was it you who was at the book bike? Mm -hmm. at, at the next yeah. Unique Vehicles event on August 13th. So thank you for representing us there. And new business, um, we are finalizing plans for September 15th open house. Invitations have gone out. Kraft and Miller will order the refreshments seven to 10 days ahead. And um, we also talked about the delivery schedule for all seasons facility um, for the fall months, um, All Seasons is a, um, a facility right on Maple in town, and uh, we have worked with them for their book club. So we provide books to them um, each month, and then we pick up the other books, and we bring them right to them. So uh, Wendy is very generous with her time doing August. I'm doing September, and then Wendy's doing October. Items not on the agenda. Uh, if you don't know, the Sheridan at the end of Lincoln um, is now called Story Point, and uh, they have a new activities director that they're in the process of hiring. So um, they've gone, um, they've had a sort of tumultuous um, 
run of uh, directors, but hopefully the next person um, will be good and stay and connect with us because we're hoping to do more with them. Um, I'm also going over there as an aside to meet a couple of people, so we're, we're hoping to try and, you know, get our connections better with them. The committee is gathering the names of organizations to <coughs> notify. We're going to have a, a nonprofit um, fair in April, and um, we're fleshing out the details. But if you have any nonprofit that you think would benefit um, being showcased in, um, in our fair, we're going to probably have, I don't know, 10 to 15 organizations, and they're going to bring their little tchotchkes and their information and everything, answer questions for possible volunteers. We're doing it, you know, April, so if kids in high school and things are thinking about jobs for the summer, volunteering, um, this would be a great opportunity. We have, uh, we have a couple already, um, you know, slated, but um, if anyone has somebody or some organization, let Rebecca, Jacqueline know. Um, and yeah, we're, we're very excited about that. Trying to reach out and, and get organizations that normally don't have uh, avenues to broadcast more fully to the public to get volunteers. So, um, so that's exciting. And our next meeting will be held on September 24 at 11. Any questions? Just, um, can I just add something here? Yes. The committee also talked about having little pieces of um, swag to hand out at outreach events. So in addition to the print-on-demand wearables, we also have some new wallet-sized magnifiers that slide right into the slot in your wallet so they're handy to have on wherever you're going. We have some new stickers, perfect for laptops and water bottles, that say, I'm bookish. And it gives the definition of what that is. And then this little QR code, if you scan it with your camera, will take you right to the library's website. And just last week, fresh off the press, fancy new pens. <laughs> so you can feel free to take a look at these later. But um, so in addition to the buyable wearables, we're also going to have these as a little tokens to have while we're out doing things like movie night in the park and at the well, farmer's market and things like that. Will we put them out at the um, open house? Or? I think we have other things in mind for the open house yep, activities there. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. Yep. Uh, next is the library report. Uh, Rebecca and Jacqueline, that starts on page 21. Yep. Um, we have our first month of the year in on the statistical dashboard here. Everything's going well so far. Um, visitors are up um, almost. 6,000 more than the same month last year. So that's probably attributable to our new entrance, which we've received a lot of good feedback on. Um, going on to programs and services on page 23, uh, Susan Dion and Cynthia Green started a new uh, parenting um, section of, with picture books on special care subjects like adoption, aging, death, uh, families, illness, moving, um, and pet death. Um, so they'll be adding new topics to that um, as they as they come about. We get a lot of people coming in asking for picture books on this section, so it'll be nice to have them all browsable in one area rather than mm -hmm. it's a great idea. Yeah, from around the library. Our summer reading program finished up earlier this month and we'll have a recap next month in our board packet. Um, but we were able to give a lot of um, prizes thanks to the Friends of the Library. So we've got um, several prize winners listed here. Um, and then going on to the facility, we've already mentioned um, the open house and the closure of the new front entrance this um, Thursday and Friday, and Wendy um, Popko's mural is in progress and will be installed September 8th. Um, we have been receiving a lot of good information and feedback on the anti-bird strike class, so we'll continue to take that throughout the year. Um, next, on page 25, um, we have started offering period products in rest, all of our restrooms here. Um, we talked about this um, with the IDEA Task Force and the Outreach Committee in April 2023. 
And um, we didn't get around to placing these in the restrooms until May of this year. So it's been over a year um, between um, concept to execution. Um, so we placed these in the restrooms um, and it's important, staff wanted to offer these to all patrons because Baldwin's a safe and inclusive place. Um, we don't assume that everyone who has a period will use a female identified restroom, just as we don't assume everyone who needs to use a changing table in a restroom will be using the women's restroom. Um, reports show uh, that period products are often cost prohibitive and availability can mean the difference between being able to go to work or school. And because periods can be unpredictable and there's no need to feel embarrassment or shame for being caught unprepared. Um, so Jacqueline has um, taken some file, metal file folder boxes, um, mesh bins, and those been, have been placed in all the restrooms. We've had them there for about four months. Um, we refill them several times a week. Uh, the cost for these products um, are gonna be, it's gonna come out to about $300 a year to fill these baskets um, in comparison to um, the hand towels that are um, like $2,100 a year. Um, and we haven't <coughs> received any negative feedback on it and we're seeing these pro products get used. I, <clears throat> I did get a comment from a patron or resident the other day that was a little shocked in the men's room to find feminine products in there. And I don't ever remember um, this being talked about or talked with the board and I'm a little disappointed that it, it wasn't brought up because I, you know, I, you know, people want to talk to us board members and, you know, we want to know what's going on and I felt a little stupid and I'm like, what are you talking about? And to come to find out we're having, um, you know, these products in the men's bathroom, which I think some people in the community could be, take it as inappropriate. Well, some people would favor it. But um, I did talk to the city manager, went over to their bathrooms. Um, they do not give anything away for free at the city. Um, so if a woman uh, or anybody needs a feminine product, product they, um, they're only in the women's bedroom, um, uh, bathrooms and they're a quarter. Um, so, you know, I feel that um, some people could view this as um, residents, could view this as political, and that, you know, if a dad goes in there with the son and says, you know, and they're inquisitive and saying, what is this? And they, you, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's for when, you know, how do you explain that? I would, I, you know, I, I, I have girls, so I, my wife has explained that to my girls, but I don't know how I would react with my son. And, you know, even though this is, is great, um, you know, progressive thinking, I don't know if the city is there yet. And I would want maybe the library board to send a letter to the city commission to get direction on what, what the city feels and what they want in their, their buildings, you know, own buildings and what, what the temperature is here. Because, you, you know, a lot of people might not um, say anything, but it was brought to my attention. But I think it would be good to have a dialogue with the city. I know the city of Ann Arbor has um, products like this in every bathroom, but that was from the city commission down and city government. So I, I would like the library or the Karen Rock or Rebecca to write a letter to the city commissioners um, and have a dialogue. And, and you know, do we make our ba bathrooms all non-gender? And so anybody, you know, so everybody feels inclusive. But I feel, um, I did have a conversation with Rebecca on Friday. Um, There's two other libraries she um, you know, uh, told, told me that we're, we're looking at um, adding free feminine hygiene products. One was Bloomfield Township Library. They um, use uh, ant flow dispensers. And I, 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 you know, our, our staff is so great at trying to save money and so forth. They felt, felt it was expensive to have these c containers. So, you know, Jacqueline was, you know, in, you know, creative and built our own little, you know, storage uh, for these products. Um, so I reached out to the associate director at Bloomfield Township. Um, they, they give these products out. They're in every woman's bathroom and they're in the family bathrooms, but not in, in the men's bathroom. I did reach out to, and her name is Catherine Bryant. 
I did reach out to Claire Meeker, who is the director of the Romeo Libraries. And she said, thanks for reaching out. You know, this has been a huge success, um, giving them out for, you know, for free and so forth. But um, they do not include them in the men's bathroom. Um, they do have a, a gender neutral bathroom, which is locked and key, you know, locked up. So patrons can't, they have to go get the key uh, from uh, a staff member. But what, what transpired that it has to be in the men's bathroom um, where we, Really haven't. I think it can be a political issue. I know Cook County and Illinois, out in Oregon, they've been very progressive. But is this, um, is this what our public public wants? And I want to be transparent. Do we change the bathrooms to be just gender gender neutral so everybody feels good? And should we look at that? I mean, if we want to be inclusive, um, I just. I did have a, you know, a resident um, concerned about it, and you know, maybe people won't say anything. I could see, you know, I, I did go up to the bathroom. Yeah, I did talk to another resident. It was the men's bathroom was empty. Well, I mean, what you could see is people um, also um, taking these products out of the men's bathroom. Like some people, you know, part of the board packet information only of what people are doing with books, and you know, trying to defer, you know, deter people um, with certain things. So I think. What, what, what was the, the I, how did we get here? Um, well, first of all, we have um, a family restroom that you could call gender neutral, and then we have a single occupancy restroom on the second floor. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary um, to change the structure and spend money on more um, renovations to our restrooms when they're working well for us. Um, we decided, you know, there's many reasons why, why it might be helpful to have period products um, in all restrooms. Um, it might be um, a husband who, or a child who knows that they don't, their parents can't afford it and they might bring one home for their mom so their mom can go to work the next day. Um, it might be a boyfriend knowing his girlfriend is starting a period and he's gonna um, pass it off to her. Um, and it might be a trans person um, who is uncomfortable already, feeling unsafe in the world, and ha sees a restroom, um, sees it in there, and has it um, as, as a last resort that they might need. Um, like, just as we don't tell people what books to choose, um, we, offer ev we offer books for everyone. This is, we're just offering products for everyone. Of course, the, the products in women's restrooms are going to be used way more frequently than they would in the men's restroom, but it doesn't mean that we can't put a couple in there for people to use. And I would just ask you then, to maybe to move forward, let's have a, di uh, a dialogue with the city or send a letter if it comes from Karen Rock, being the president, um, and get the city commissioner's um, take on this, that this is appropriate. Um, you know, just to, and I think Birmingham probably will wrap its arms around it. But I, I think we need to be transparent to our, our patrons to get feedback on this and, and maybe start with the city if how uh, progressive we want to be would be a good start and have a dialogue with them regarding the situation if, if you want to continue to keep them in the men's bathroom. Wait, I have a comment about that, <laughs> since you're volunteering me to write something like this. Well, you're the, I just said because you're the president. I would be concerned about setting a precedent by asking the city commission to yeah. set li library policy, because that's, that's not a good precedent to set. I agree. So I, I would not be in favor of sending a letter like that to the city commission. I would agree. We're elected officials, and we should be deciding. But and it affects the library. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. Affect the whole city. It affects whatever so I, I people are going into that bathroom and using those products. Really. Well, then I think it Why should be transparent how? and let it out there in the public somehow, so we get feedback as we are doing with the third safe glass and. Well, I mean, anybody who uses it, if they have a problem with it, right. they should be contacting Why it was Rebecca. Safe by testing it. I mean, you know, it's out there. Because me, I, I come to this library a lot. I don't really use the stall, so I was a little. Um, I didn't. Ha I had no idea they were in there. Um, I think it's a little bit different between glass and a glass coating that costs forty thousand dollars and 
a small basket in a restroom, um, a total of which would cost three hundred dollars in one year. Well, that's just now. I mean, you we can wait and see where the you know after one year what the total cost is. I think, you know, you're saying three hundred dollars. What if it becomes twelve hundred dollars? Then we would evaluate it because we are counting on the budget to be small. Um, a case of 250 of these costs $67. So, and we, it took us about four months to go through one case. Um, to me, I mean, it also could be a father here with um, a girl who gets it for the first time and the dad would, you know, hand it to her and explain what to do with it. Or, you know, it could be a trans student who's here studying with peers and they don't want to be embarrassed. And, you know, it goes back to our mission statement of having resources for everyone. And that would allow them to, you know, consider continue their study session. Um, I just, I think it's a nice thing to offer. And I don't think, you know, we need to write a letter to the city. I think it's just a nice extra service to offer our patrons and, you know, even, you know, parents that are here with their little kids and if it pops up as a surprise, you know, it's nice to have it in there. Um, and a mom of two boys, they know what they are. So, I mean, because they live with me, but like, and I mean, even the growing up talk, you know, starts at 10 at school. So I think most little boys kind of know what those things are for. Well, uh, another thought, I've not really into this conversation, uh, but um, I, you guys are all young, but uh, pads can be used for other bodily functions um, very readily. They can come in very handy for everyone when um, things are not going well. So um, I, I really appreciate having having that and I know older men certainly do so um, yeah I mean I've asked other people what their and then and maybe we're just being naive it's like why you know just and I understand you know so is this strictly for the is this for the transgender that we're focusing on then for putting these products in the male bathroom and is that, is, is that it? I, we've just said several reasons and several people that could benefit from these. Hmm. I, I just wish I was aware of it and, um, and I think um, I, 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 you guys all approve, but I, I don't approve of it. So I just want to make that fact clear on, on um, that's my opinion. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, going on to the next strategic goal for diversity and equity. Um, we have a book club coming up in September we'll be, where we'll be reading Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Um, we selected our celebration months for 2025, and then uh, we will be unveiling a new training module on Staff Development Day, um, where we have staff um, work on DEI training throughout the year, and there'll be um, ways to earn badges by um, com completing two to four modules, depending on whether or not you're part-time or full-time. I'll turn it over to Jacqueline. Okay, going over to page 28, we'll continue with community outreach and partnerships. Um, we were at the farmer's market on July 21st, where Susan Dion provided some crafts, and Phoenix Nash and Rindy of the Friends talked up the library from the book bike. Um, special shout out to Frank and Amy Paisano for <laughs> responding in the emergency situation where the book bike blew a tire at the bottom of the hill when Phoenix was trying to ride it back. And uh, they came to our rescue with a truck. So thank you very much for spending a few minutes of your Sunday doing that. No worries. Um, on August 9th, Rebecca took the book bike to the BSD's Friday family movie night um, down in Booth Park. 
Um, and she was able to hand out some of our new swag, so that was exciting. <laughs> and on the 13th, Rebecca and H took part in workplace training with the staff from the city of Birmingham, uh, where they heard from Johnny Crowder, who discussed the importance of maintaining good mental health practices. Um, going down, we continue to submit um, information to the Village of Beverly Hills um, for inclusion in their weekly emails and monthly newsletters. Uh, Rebecca's going to go to the August 25th Bingham Farms Village Council meeting to give an update on the library to their council members. Um, we continue with Birmingham Next to do two book clubs, both popular reads and nonfiction. And as mentioned, we went to the Hot Wheels on Midvale event um, where we got to feature our bike amongst all the really cool classic cars. Um, the friends met informally via Zoom on Tuesday the 13th. They are going to change their August 24th book sale to September 7th. Um, that'll help better balance the time between the big sale and the last one, the last fourth Saturday. Also, they had a better response for the seventh for help with the sale. So that two big reasons. Um, Step, uh, board member Stephanie Brochert was going to be stepping down from the Friends board, but wrote a really nice note, which included that she was so glad to have gotten to spend some time with you all and do this great work. Uh, very fortunately, one of their new board members, Sue Ochalik, is that right? Ochalik, ha um, has agreed to take over the membership chair position, so they will not be without someone in the interim, which is great news. And they're going to be combining their annual solicitation with their newsletter in September. They'll be back meeting at the library next month. Um, we continue to work with Michelle to create projects and marketing pieces, and thanks to Robert for sending out those e-newsletters without fail each month. And Rebecca's sending the monthly welcome to Baldwin um, emails to new cardholders. We and under the staffing changes, we are welcoming three new substitute librarians this month. Um, Amber Davis, Kim Goodrich, and Melissa Moore um, have all come on board and have started training in the adult services department. Um, so we're excited to have them uh, to help us round out our staffing on the reference desks. And then if you flip over to the next page, which is 32, um, it's well, it's a little past time. Sorry. Thanks for your patience while we updated this for this month. But um, the strategic plan, action plan updates, uh, there are a whole bunch in that far right side column. I'm just going to highlight a few for you here. Under strategic point um, number one, uh, B1, identify and offer programs and services for underserved populations. We've hired a part-time teen librarian to help focus on expanding some of those programs and to also include some middle school students. They've had requests for cookbook club and writing club to return which they'll be able to do now with these extra hours dedicated to teen services. Um, under B2, improving the discovery of physical and virtual collections. Um, I hope you've had a chance to take a look at the Best Bets collection. It's flying off the shelves, so we're going to be able to add some more to that, which is great. Um, under point C1, which is expanding support for digital literacy and skills training, we're going to be offering, or we have been offering a wider array of technology programs, and additional staff have stepped up to offer help in providing additional programming, so we'll be able to expand and diversify the classes and schedule. Flipping over to page 34, under strategic goal number two, which is facility related, under D5, we're identifying ways to make the building more eco-friendly. The adult <laughs> services department has taken to using microfiber towels to do cleaning around the computers every day, um, so those can be washed and reused instead of paper towels or disposable wipes. And um, the cookbook club uh, is using glass plates, um, which they were etched in the idea lab in the middle with a little cookbook club logo. So everybody is going to be able to reuse those glass plates. And they're offering reusable cups instead of disposable bottles of water. So That's very cool. Yes. Thank you. And um, over on page 37, under strategic goal four, uh, point A5, coordinating annual fairs. You heard Missy mention the nonprofit fair. Um, also keep in mind, we're going to be offering a local author fair in November of this fall. So applications are being accepted right now for people who want to participate as authors, and then we'll start promoting attendance once we have the authors selected. So lots of good stuff going on. Um, and uh, just because I really like to announce things like this, 
it's not in here, but last week we rolled 51,000 bottles saved on our water bottle refill station upstairs. So nice. another green effort in the library, which um, I happened to catch Susan Dion, who is always trying to be the one who rolls it over to that zero. <laughs> so we watched it together. <laughs> so lots of good things happening on the action plan. If you have questions about anything, let us know. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few questions. First of all, under uh, B4, one of my favorite What page things. are we on? I'm sorry. Uh, page 33. Okay. Library of Things. Mm -hmm. What's the status there? The shelf that we need for the Library of Things um, is being modified next week. Okay. And then we will be able to start putting, we, then we have to flip flops and shelves, and then we'll be ready to put them out. And where is it being modified? Just around here? On site. Or, uh, okay. And where, where is this going to be again? Um, along the wall between the adult reference desk and the idea lab. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to ask about uh, page 35B3. Um, we have $5,000 allotted for um, staff training. Um, <coughs> I just wanted to confirm my understanding of this. It says five training opportunities for staff each year. So are those some of these, are these three things listed, some of the things that, and then two others or whatever? These are just the ones that were offered this quarter. This quarter, but we're going to have five different ones next time? We kind of, we adjusted this a little bit. Um, so with our new training that we're debuting at staff day, there's 11 modules in there that people can choose from, and then they'll pick four or two based on whether they're part-time or full-time. Um, and the $5,000 a year, that was just a, a placeholder. We haven't, um, I don't think we have plans to spend that much for the year. And I know that the Ryan Dowd webinars are, is it like, like a $400 a year? $400 yeah. A year. Oh, because I was thinking actually the other way. Because, um, I mean, I don't know how many you're counting for full-time staff and then part-time staff, but for training, so you're not counting things like going to the MLA or things like that, is that correct? Um, attending one of the DEI workshops at the MLA conference would count. Um, and then our library network offers webinars, online webinars, yeah. and so those would be okay. one of one of Very them inexpensive. Yeah. But because it seemed like 5000 for everybody to go a few times didn't seem enough. But I guess yeah. you, you know I don't. But um, And then uh, two things here um, on page 37C2. Um, I thought our logo branding was already done. Is it done? It is done. So nice. the fi it was just $500, and, and so we're... There's no comment over there, but it's completed, right? Yes, it's completed. Okay. Yep. And then this is just a, a thought of, of mine, probably in, in connection with uh, outreach. Uh, goal 5, um, What's the page? page 37, mm -hmm. train, empower, and equip members of an organization to better support users and each other. I keep thinking that um, there are more interests or capability for our from our staff that we might be able to utilize a little bit. So, for instance, um, you know, um, I don't know. For instance, I'm a traveler, for, and and I know a certain places really well. So maybe you could develop a, a program out of that and have you know maybe cooking with it and you know highlights. Um, so you did develop something. Somebody might be on the staff may, may be really good with uh, Michigan history, for instance, and be able to say, hey, you know, if you need somebody who, who wants to know more, um, maybe on the, you know, high school level, you know, sophisticated, maybe we can, you know, highlight. So if we know what each of our staff might be, not necessarily expert, but, you know, above average, um, you know, maybe they can help us out on something. If somebody comes and says, I don't know, if they say, gosh, it's March, I want to put in a new garden, I don't know where to go, I would say, Robert is here. Um, 
so that kind of thing. So I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, think about, you know, if you have some strengths on the staff that haven't been, um, you know, highlighted, maybe this is an opportunity to develop. Some people might be really thrilled, or maybe they'll start like a, um, a bicycling thing around town, or you know, that kind. Of, you know, just that to, is one of my favorite things about our staff is yeah. everyone has. A really interesting hobby. And um, I, I would say a lot of people have turned those hobbies into like at least one program that we've done here. Yeah. Um, so there's always something interesting or you're learning someone does something right. that you've never heard of. And then we do it as a program. So, but yes, yeah. I like to encourage that. It's one of the job interview questions that we ask. Like, oh. do you have any interests or things? Yeah. Um, so we are looking to do that. So, or or yeah. somebody might come to us and say, you know, I'm thinking about swimming in the Olympics and I need to talk to somebody <laughs> who is a really good swimmer and who swims miles and miles that we, we have the exact person now. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me before, t before this weekend. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Anything else on the action plan? Okay, you can look forward to a, another update in less than three months. <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda are the liaisons, and uh, Rindy is not here, and Andrew Drummond from Beverly Hills is not here, Susan McCarthy's not here, and Kathy Michigan is not here. They all called and um, told Rebecca various reasons why they were unable to come tonight. I have an update from Kathy. Oh. Um, the Bingham Farms passed their 24-25 budget. That was approved. Okay. They are encouraging residents to attend our open house on September 15th. And they have three new trustees joining in November. Uh, Jim Miller, Eric McAlexander, and Mike Duran. Thanks. Very nice. And she said something. Um, any new and miscellaneous business? As first thing is the 2025 calendar. So if you could go to page 48 and just take a look at it. Um, there are a few dates, um, you know, where we've had we have holidays, so we're not meeting on the third Monday of every month. So just make sure when you look at your calendar and put it on your own calendar that you mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So our, our first conflict is President's Day is the third Monday of February. So we propose moving the meeting to the 24th, um, which it's kind of convenient that President's Day is on the 17th um, and we can't have our meeting because that's um, midwinter break. Um, and then in October, the, f the Friends meeting um, falls on a holiday on both the 14th and the 21st. Um, so we would propose having their meeting on the 28th for the Friends of the Library meeting at 7 p.m. And they've agreed to this. And then same thing with their November meeting. It falls on Veterans Day. So we would propose moving their meeting to the 18th. And then the library board meeting falls on Diwali in October. So we would propose moving that to October 27th on Monday. And then the other thing... Um, that staff pointed out to me is um, July 4th is on a Friday this year, next year. And so um, they're requesting Saturday and Sunday to be closed. So we would save money. We wouldn't have to pay staff holiday pay for Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then part-time staff that work, um, it would cost approximately $1,500 that we would save um, to be closed on that Sunday. So I will put that out for you to decide on that. That is, that's what I caught on the calendar. And then the same thing that we've done for ever since Martin Luther King Day holidays. Um, we don't meet on a Monday. We meet on a Wednesday. Yeah, why, why don't we meet on a, like when we do have a conflict, not meet on the following Wednesday. You know, like Martin Luther King is, it falls on a Monday, but we have our meeting on a Wednesday. But now yeah. President's Day is on a Monday, but you bumped it up to the following, you know, the next Monday. Why not the Wednesday, or is there? Um, that's what we, I, I did it because that's what we did this year. Um, we could do it on the 19th, but that's the school break week. Um, and then 
I was actually thinking we should move Martin Luther King the closure and meet the next the Monday. So we I think you should decide if you want to do Wednesdays or Mondays. We could keep it all uniform. Um, like. Um, so you're saying instead of Wednesday, January 22nd, making it Monday, January 27th, is that what you're saying? Yes. Do we need a motion or discussion? Does anybody have a comment about moving instead of having it on Wednesday, January 22nd, having it on the next Monday? Just to st stick with the Monday calendar of meetings? I'd prefer it on the Wednesday just because of, like, I'll have on some Mondays have um, the district PTA president's meeting, so then that would be a conflict for me, but um, I'm just throwing that out. I could do either. I'm flexible. It's just always in the past. If we closed on that Monday, we yeah. usually had it that Wednesday. Mm -hmm. so I, I didn't know, but I'm I'm flexible. Yeah, me too. But, you know, mm -hmm. so it sounds like everybody's okay with leaving it as this calendar shows on Wednesday. Yeah, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it helps you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then I would have to pick, and then it's like yeah. District PTA here. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Would anybody like to make a motion to approve this calendar? I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the 2025 library candle calendar as found on page 49 of the August 2024 board packet. Second. So that, that does include closing on July 5th and 6th, right? Right. Okay. And saving money to do that. Yeah. Um, Robert, could we have a roll call vote? Rock. Yes. Rumble. Yes. Mark. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Paisano. Wheeler. Yes. All yeas. Okay, and the next um, new and miscellaneous business is the electronic device network and internet use policy. Um, there are some changes to it. It's on 51. Well, it's actually 52. The whole policy is 52 and 53, and the change is listed on 51. So with this, um, this was uh, decided upon by Rebecca and the staff on review of the updated electronic device network and internet use policy in June 2024. Staff members in adult services noted that the new policy does not reflect current computer use practices in the department. So what is suggested is the first paragraph change is that it would say users with a registered BPL card or computer use account are guaranteed two hours of public computer use per day with no extensions. Guest passes are also available for 30 minutes per day with no extensions. For users wishing to use computers for longer than two hours per day, BPL offers internet to-go kits for checkout that include a Chromebook and Wi-Fi hotspot. <coughs> so what has changed is they're not granting a specified amount of access time and additional time is not being given um, even when there are no users waiting. And the other part is some workstations are limited to children, parents, and guardians of children and or young adults has been crossed off. Just a quick question. Um, when you get the to-go kits that include a Chromebook, a, a Chromebook, and Wi-Fi hotspot, how how long do you get that for? Seven days. Seven days. <coughs> Seven days. You can take that home. Have we? Has that been successful? People bring them back. Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm curious about where it said some workstations are limited to children, parents, and guardians of children and or young adults, and that has been crossed off. So were you not finding that those workstations were really being used that way and they were really needed for other users? Yes. So we had, um, we used to have teen computers 
and teens are bringing phones or laptops, the school issued laptops, so we don't need teen computers. Uh, we used to have youth computers, which were on the temporary checkout desk that we had during phase three. Um, and actually, we, we never, after the youth room opened in 2020, we never brought the computers back and no one has missed them. Mm -hmm. So we're not leaving computers in the youth room and so there's just one spot for all of them. Okay. So. Why are we restricting um, guest passes to just 30 minutes? Because right now, like I've been here where my library card isn't working and I'll just sign in as a guest because I need to get something printed and leave. Mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering, because there's always, there always seems we're not to be an empty spot. Yes, the guest passes are generally for people who need to print a boarding pass or print something really quick. Um, it's not. It's not. Okay. We haven't had an issue with people not having enough time to use things. Okay. Um, and the offering the internet to go kits that happens um, where someone wants to renew their time that happens maybe once every two or three months. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very infrequent. Any other comments on this? Um, anybody like uh, to I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to adopt the changes to the electronic device network and internet use policy found on pages 52 and 53. I'll second. Robert, should we do a roll call vote? Rock. Yes. Rumpel? Yes. Mark? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Paisano? Yes. Wheeler? Yes. All yes. Okay. Um, no other new and miscellaneous business. Is there, and no unfinished business. And there were no items removed from the consent agenda. So the next regular meeting of the library board will take place on Monday, September 16th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Sure, I'll make a motion to adjourn the August 19th board meeting. I'll second. And let's have a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nobody said no, nay. So we're adjourned. And if you could please turn to page 106, we'll begin the trust meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Nice to see you. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. Bye. Hello, and welcome to the Baldwin Public Library Trust Meeting in the Rotary Donor Room on Monday, August 19, 2024, immediately following the regular board meeting. Robert, would you please call the roll for tonight's meeting? Karen Rock. Here. Danielle Rumpel. Here. Missy Mark. Here. Wendy Friedman. Here. Frank Paisano. Here. Jennifer Wheeler. Here. Also with us still is student representative Kate Walter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first, Here. Order, <laughs> first order of business, uh, general public comment period. The library board values public meetings and welcomes your comments on library issues. The board respectfully asks that comments be made as concisely as possible. We welcome your comments, but will not debate items not on the agenda. The maximum time for individual speakers should not exceed three minutes. Um, there are no members of the public here. Is anybody on? No? Um, <coughs> next is the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion and approved by a roll call vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered as the last item under new business. First is the approval of July 15, 2024 minutes, found on page 107. Second is the acceptance of the July 2024 receipts of $1,779.58 found on page 114. 
And third is the approval of the July 2024 disbursements of $8,394.48 found on page 115. Um, there's no members of the public to remove any item. Does any member of the board want to remove any of the items? Would anyone like to make a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Thank you. Robert, could you do a roll call vote? Rock. Rumpel. Yes. Mark. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Paisano. Yes. Wheeler. Yes. All yes. Uh, new and miscellaneous yes. business. There's nothing listed. No, I, I just usually come. We had a really good meeting with um, uh, Jim Cummins and Connor. They're very, very engaging. I think they're doing a great job. We're well diversified. Um, I think, you know, we, with the fixed income that we have um, in the portfolio, we'll start paying dividends, especially if. The Fed is going to cut interest rates here in September, so that will be a positive. So I thought it was a great meeting, and I'm glad that they went with the ambassador account to charge us less fees, and mm -hmm. hopefully we'll continue to see good returns. How, how often do you have them come in, like twice a year or something? About twice a year. Uh -huh. okay. But he said, um, and we wanted him to be proactive, there was a couple of things that he would like to maybe do with the portfolio, but with the markets moving so fast and our meetings not every month, and he – we said, call Rebecca, talk to Rebecca, because we, we trust him and trust her. Um, so if we needed to react quickly, they were, they were able to be in communication and, and make sure that they're doing the right thing for the portfolio. Good. Do you, do you think with the presidential election coming up, there's um, any need or whatever mm -hmm. to... Nope. Make sure we're ready for We're good. Happens. You know what? It doesn't matter who's in office. If you stay invested long term, and, you know, there's a study that said, okay, if you only were invested during uh, years that a Democrat was elected, your percentage is higher than, let's say, you just invested when a Republican president was in. But the key factor is just staying in, regardless of <coughs> your power, pays huge dividends, and you do well. So it's not timing the market, it's timing the market. Um, so the next trust meeting will be held immediately following the next regular meeting of the Baldwin Public Library Board of Directors on Monday, September 16th, 2024. I'll make a motion to adjourn the August 19th, 2024 trust meeting. I'll second. And let's have a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the meeting is adjourned.